بسم اللہ الرحمن میں السلام علیکم ایوری ون گڈ ٹو سی آل آف یو فار آر سیکنڈ سیشن آن چیلنجز آف لونگ ایتھیکلی ناؤ ان دا لاسٹ سیشن وی ور بیسکلی جنرلی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ڈفرنٹ ایشوز اینڈ ہاؤ سوسائٹی ہیومینٹی ریلیجن دا کمیونٹی انسٹیٹیوشنز دا ہوم نامز بہیویئرز ایٹیٹیوڈس اینڈ رولز ریگولیشنز اینڈ لاز آل ہیو این افیکٹ آن آور لائفز اینڈ نیچرلی ان مینی سرکمسٹانسز وی آر فیسڈ by challenges in which making a decision becomes very difficult. Now, looking at it a little bit more ahead and seeing how other factors tend to contribute towards all of this and then how is it that we can overcome these challenges and move forward in a better way. Uh, so, everything in this world is rational. Just like last time mentioning that people tend to rationalize what they are doing even if it is wrong. Everyone wants to be known as a rational individual and not as an irrational individual. But in all of these circumstances, there are certain factors which we either do or do not do. Most human beings will avoid pain. Yes, there are the sadistic type. There are the psychologically delinquished type. There are those individuals who savor pain, but they're very, very few. The majority of humanity wants to avoid pain at any cost. They don't want to suffer individual pain, and they don't want to suffer family pain or community pain. And sometimes, unfortunately, In this avoidance of pain, we tend to compromise on our values and on our ethical beliefs. So yes, pain can be a contributory towards unethical practice. It could be physical pain, it could be mental pain, it could be psychological pain. So any type of pain is a very, very big catalyst. of behavior and thinking change. We as human beings are generally pleasure seeking. So the opposite, the diagonally 180 degree opposite of pain is pleasure. And we as human beings are attuned or genetically configured in such a way that we try to find out pleasure. And again, in this quest of pleasure, we can cross our limits of freedom can cross our boundaries of righteousness and immerse ourselves into the oblivious, into the dark, and be engulfed by circumstances which tend to make us compromise. We as human beings are creative storytellers. We creatively tell stories. We try to make them exciting. We try to make them gullible. We try to make them coated in excitement. We are socially status concerned individuals. Status reeks from us. We want to see what type of materialism someone has. People are not known by the strength of their character or by the solitude of their values and beliefs. But people are known by the clothes or brands that they carry, by the car that they have, by the office that they have, by the home that they have. How ostentatious and pretentious are their homes and their offices. They are judged by the things they have. and not by the attitude, behavior, knowledge, skills, abilities, strength of character, and strength of belief that they have. Now, this social self-aggrandizement leads to something which is called self-loving beings, narcissism, being a narcissist, loving oneself in such a way that everything else is clouded. The question is why? Why does this happen? And then, driven by powerful desires. 
so if if we are driven by powerful desires as a main consideration of growth of performance and of sense of achievement then maybe it is very important to dwell on self control of understanding where one has to stop where one cannot traverse where one should not go because it would have multiple implication and the scourge of society is is when people start believing in these norms in these traits in these actions what is more important how do we interpret all of these in a righteous and a correct way that is what is important so everyone is living in various contexts that influence how each one of us behave and can cause each us to violate our intrinsic fears intrinsic values out of fear so again ladies and gentlemen what happens is is that we are living a life of fear even though we are stating that we don't fear anything but the truth is that we are fearful the truth is that we are sacrificing our intrinsic values for worldly gain and also we sometimes cannot understand the dynamics of influencing each other which can lead to a state of chaos and confusion and it is very important that we understand rationality and allow the possibility of rationalization in the words of benjamin franklin so convenient a thing it is to be a reasonable creature since it enables one to find or make a reason for everything one has a mind to do so what we tend to do is that we complement our actions by rational by reasoning by examples by some sort of excuse put them all together and justify what we have done so actually one wrong action will take hundreds of more wrong actions and we are in a state of oblivion we are in a state of being oblivious to what is true to what is right to what is correct to what is lawful all of these things are extremely important and we cannot keep on going on by creative storytelling which can lead each one of us to form fantasies about ourselves that lead to unethical action human sociality can lead them to join an unthinking mob look at what happened in sialkot when two boys were lynched by different segments of society by educated segments of society and they were dragged and then hung by a tree why we have the noor muqaddam case right now why did that happen why is it that on one hand the religion of islam says that taking and giving of a bribe leads to hell and then one should not give bribe infested food or items to one's own kids but through creative storytelling we try to solemnize try to rationalize try to minimize the guilt factor that is very important why do we do all of those corrupt practices why are we involved in nepotism favoritism discrimination bias why do we tread on other people's freedom why is it that we are not diligent in our work why is it that we waste different types of things why is it that we indulge in ayashi why why do we do all of these things when all of us know that it's not allowed that it should not be done that we will be held accountable in this world and the next world and it could lead to hell what is the road to heaven something totally converse why can't we believe in that why can't we practice that why can't we implement that and move forward why do we have a mob culture god has made us ashraf al makhlukat why don't we think why don't we use our brain to try to understand the fallacies and the truths of life 
they are all extremely important. We cannot dwell upon putting these values to the side and moving forward. On the other hand, what we see is that people care about status. Status concern can lead to out of control materialism and an unhealthy obsession with power. So that is why people are power hungry, They're trying to grasp for power and then abuse and misuse that power for exploitation and manipulation of others. The question is why? Self-concern can lead to excessive self-concern to a form of narcissism, self-love. That should be avoided at all cost. Our powerful fashions can be both deeply rewarding and deeply destructive. It's a, it's a paradox. On one side, it can push us forward with positivity. But if it goes to the negative side, then it can drown us in the unfathomable oceans, never to come back. But the question, ladies and gentlemen, is not an answer. It is actually why. Why do we do all of that and indulge in what we should not? So rather than answers, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave you with a question. Why? Why can't we speak the truth? Why can't we be honest? Why can't we shun our ego and our arrogance? And why can't we empathize with each other and move forward as humans, for humans? And look at progress in the greater context of humanity rather than exclusivity in the destiny of a few. That are the challenges of living ethically. Thank you so much.